the fourth time that the angel spoke to Joseph in a dream was when the angel told Joseph, Bring the child and the mother to Nazareth. He will be called a Nazarene. And that episode in the life of Jesus, the Nazareth years, the years of Nazareth, are also called the hidden life of Jesus. Until he reached 30, when he received baptism in the Jordan, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and then the public ministry began. Nazareth means hiddenness. Nazareth is secret life of Jesus. They are not recorded in the scriptures. They are not recorded in the Bible. Of course, there are some speculations, but officially and really, nothing is written in the Bible about his years in Nazareth. We do not really know. We do not know. But there are many things really we do not know. There are so many things that people do not know about us. So the question I throw to you is, what are your secrets? What are your hidden things that your friends do not know? Maybe your superiors do not know, but surely God knows. What are your secrets? What is your hidden life? Are those secrets skeletons in the closet? Or are those secrets beautiful secrets, acts of goodness, acts of prayer, acts of generosity known only to God? What are your secrets? What are you afraid of will be revealed? What do you want to reveal that is not yet revealed? As we reflect on the secrets, the hidden life, the hidden chapters and episodes in our lives, I'd like to bring for your consideration David and how he was anointed. The prophet Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse in order to anoint one of the sons to be king. The first son, the second son, the third son, they were all presented to the prophet and there was a whisper, not him, not him, not him. But eventually the prophet Samuel said, are these all your sons? And Jesse said, I have one more, but he's in the field. Call for him. And as soon as the prophet saw David, the Lord whispered to him and said, He's the one. Anoint him. Samuel was used by God to call David. Samuel was used by God to anoint the king. The first question to ask ourselves is, who is that person in your life whom God used to make you aware of your vocation? Is that a secret? Is that not known? If that is not known, if that is hidden, it is time to make it public and making it public, express gratitude for the Samuel in your life whom God used to call you, to anoint you, to send you forth. But the second character in the life of David was Bathsheba. He was already an established, acclaimed king. And he woke up one afternoon from siesta and through the window saw Bathsheba bathing. And he got interested. And one thing led to another, and Bathsheba begot a child. She became pregnant. But David did not like to accept responsibility. One whisper said, do not do that. The other whisper said, yes, you can do it. If you can win a war, why can you not, why can you not win the war against your own self? But he fell. 
But instead of admitting, he covered it up. He was now a bureaucrat. So he called for Uriah, wanted him to sleep with the wife. He declined. Tried again and made him drunk. He declined. Finally, David plotted and put Uriah at the front line. And when the battle was fierce, the soldiers were told to withdraw. And Uriah died. A question is, what are your secret seductions? What are your secret attractions? What are your hidden secrets? Which bureaucracy, which administration has empowered you to do? When I was still a younger priest, I had a friend who was an organist in the parish church and a catechist in the same parish. I officiated at their marriage and on their fifth wedding anniversary, they invited me, but I was not able to come. So I came 10 days later. 10 days, 10 days later, they hosted a meal for me at home. So while the wife was preparing the dinner, I asked, So, ano kayo nag fifth wedding anniversary? And the wife just said, Ba Father, Giorgio treated me for chicken joy. It was already 10 days later, there was still a beam, a sparkle in the eyes of the wife because she had chicken joy for their fifth wedding anniversary. I was disturbed because I was no longer celebrating my anniversary by Jollibee. The priesthood had sophisticated me. It had complicated my taste. It had complicated my choices. And I had to reconcile with the Lord and with myself and return to my first love. Who or what is Bathsheba in your life? Is it money? Is it position? Whom are you seducing? Whom are you covering up? What are you don't like? What is it that you don't like to accept that you have done? Who is the Uriah? Whom have you murdered in order to co cover up for your sins? And the third character in the life of David was Nathan. Nathan came forward in the presence of the king and said, Your Royal Highness, what do you think of this? There was a rich man with a huge herd of cattle. There was one poor man who had one ewe lamb. And the rich man wanted the ewe lamb for himself, but he did not like to sell. So the rich man had the poor man killed so that he could possess the ewe lamb the single ewe lamb of the poor man. And David said, For as long as the Lord lives, that man should die. And Nathan said, You are the man. Who is Nathan in your life? Who is that person in your life that annoys you or tells you unpleasant things about yourself, who challenges your opinions, who shakes your convictions, who questions your motivations. Maybe you don't like the person, but maybe the person is sent by God to correct you, to put you on the right path. Who is Nathan in your life? Not all those who disagree with us are our enemies. Some of those who disagree with us are God sent. Because God wants to deliver us from error, from mistakes. Who is the secret Samuel in your life? Unrecognized, unthanked for. Who is the secret Bathsheba in your life? Seducing you, 
or whom you seduce, for whom you cover up, for whom you are willing to kill. Who is Nathan in your life? The secret person whom you don't like, who tells you nasty things about you, but they are the truth. They are not gossipers. They are not intriguers. They are prophets. They are spokesmen of God to bring you to humility, to bring you to truth. What are your secrets? What is the Nazareth of your life? What is God asking you to tell him? What is God asking you to expose to him so that the skeletons may be healed, so that the beauty may be revealed, so that his name, his beautiful name, may be glorified. What are your secrets? Who are your secret Samuels, secret Bathshebas, secret Nathans? Tell the Lord your secrets. Be honest. You cannot hide from him like Adam and Eve hid from him. He knows everything. If you're honest, he can save you. With this honesty and with our hypocrisy, we prevent the Lord from working wonders and miracles in our lives.